to leave yesterday. Uh, actually, has somebody already contacted them if they arrived safe in Ljubljana? Yeah, they arrived. They arrived safe? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so Thursday, our intensive program gets more and more to the end, but I know it's intensive. And yeah, well, everybody gets a little bit tired after all those social events and so on. But I still would like to invite you to give your full attention to Terje, because she, I think, is telling us a lot of interesting things about technology <coughs> in our society and also in our education. So thank you very much and let's go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good morning from my side. I'm just wondering, are you as tired as I am? Yes. <laughs> but it's the last day and I, and I really hope, last couple of presentations at least, and I really hope that you manage to survive this with me. I, I want to start uh, with, uh, with this presentation telling you a little bit about myself. As I arrive later, probably you don't have hardly any idea who I am and where I come from. And we have also understood here as teachers that it's uh, quite important to have technical knowledge. knowledge. So, um, I went to the university to become, actually I wanted to become a sports teacher. So much into sport, but um, I had an uh, accident and that's why I couldn't do the sport case. So I chose just a random uh, program. I thought that I could start with this one and then go over to sports field. But uh, it turned out that I started to like it. So my background is actually natural sciences. So I went to the university to become a teacher of natural sciences. And um, I went to school to be a teacher. I was there for three years. It was a super nice experience, very tough, but I enjoyed it a lot. And at the same time, I also continued my master's studies. So I should be a specialist on ecology, on beaches, and understand all the processes, uh, what are going on there. But please don't ask me these questions. <laughs> it was a long time ago, and I, I don't remember much anymore. And um, at that time, all of a sudden, I had an idea or an opportunity to go to the Netherlands, the University of Twente. And this was the first time when I became uh, acquainted with uh, educational technology. So I, I did an intensive master program there too, which was at that time called uh, Telematics Applications in Education and Training. And this was also a super nice experience. A lot of international students, a lot to learn from them. And when I came back to Estonia, it was kind of a natural way to continue with my PhD studies. So I continued in Finland, which was much closer to Estonia. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was around 2004. And then I also started to work uh, at Tallinn University for the Center for Educational Technology as a researcher and, and a teacher and I'm still there. Sometimes I think it's about time to make a move, but I really enjoy my colleagues and the environment that we have there. And um, what we do there is, um, is, is research and development. So we try to bring in all these innovative ideas also in our university and in Estonia. And um, some of the <coughs> say, most important keywords regarding the research we do are um, digital learning ecosystems, very popular these days, e-portfolios, new interactive environments, serious games, as you already mentioned before, um, competence advancement, self-direction, and so on. So it's a, a wide variety of concepts and, and models we, we are working on. So this is shortly all about my background and probably it helps you to understand a little bit why I 
have chosen some of the books because my background is natural sciences. But um, about the topic. So, um, this is already said, but uh, I don't want to demonstrate any tools, any services. I think you have seen this a lot. We have a nice collection of new tools, <coughs> and I'm not going to do this. Instead, I would rather want to spend some time on thinking what the technology is and what does it do to us. So, what's the role of technology in our society, education? And um, I want you to go through with this with me. I don't ask you to be in groups and do group work. I want you to ask questions, comment, especially when I ask for it. But you can always um, raise your hand and, and comment or ask questions or, or provide some critics if you feel like. Um, have you ever thought about questions like these? And what's the role of technology in our society? How should we approach it? How has it changed our life? Not really. <laughs> I agree, because we also in our center, we just hear, oh, this is a nice new concept, let's go for it. Never really thinking twice, does it really make sense? Mm -hmm. No. And one of them is, for example, this learning analytics, which at least in, in research field has become very popular. But if you just stop for a moment and think, hey, what the heck is that? <coughs> we don't do this. We just go with the flow and, and try to be the first ones. But um, I'm not going to say that I'm going to cover all these questions. This is just an idea or, or the direction where I want to go with this presentation. And um, so I want you to step out from your everyday practice and reflect on, on technology with me. It's okay? Um, then you could ask, why am I doing this? Because what Lina already said uh, yesterday, that we always have to ask these why questions. And um, do you remember also, you also mentioned at some point that, that we are not here only to get some very specific knowledge. We should get the wider perspective, wider understanding. And this is what I'm trying to do here, or at least provide a glimpse of that. Um, if I think about um, the research fail, this educational technology, uh, it's very much dominated by computer scientists. So they have all the technical knowledge, but they hardly think of any pedagogical models or approaches. And um, I think it's a, it's a huge problem because what we do in research one day will be in, in our practice. And um, I think it has to change at some point that we should kick these computer scientists a bit aside. They are important, of course. I don't say that they shouldn't be there. But we should have more also people who deal with pedagogical issues because I believe that technology is not just the tool which we use. It's something more. And the way they do this, it's... Um, the studies are mainly about uh, the effects of some tools in certain <coughs> contexts. And um, one author once provided a very nice comparison that it's like a manufacturer's guide how to implement or how to install a washing machine. So I don't know if you agree on this or not, but it, it sounds something like that to me. So I have two questions, so let's get into the topic. I don't ask you to answer me, but I would want you to think through this for a moment and consider yes or no. You don't have to say it out loud, just think for yourself what it is. Is it yes or no? So, if you said no, 
then uh, you belong to this group who believe that um, technology is the key. So in this case, we can talk about this technological determinism. So it's a slightly philosophical perspective I'm going to take here, but I hope it helps you to understand. So what does it mean? Or what does this group think technology does to us? So they think that it's, it's a driving force in our society. And if technology changes, it also changes our society. They think that it's an independent force. It develops more or less on its own. It doesn't interact with, with society. And um, technology say, uh, shapes us much more than we shape it. And um, um, technology itself is the, is the most important thing which changes our society. The term was coined a long time ago by one of the economists. And um, it's believed that uh, yeah, this technological innovation is the, is the cause of society, is the effect of that. And human factors don't play role here. And everything what, uh, what is going on in our society, these complex events, they can be <coughs> explained as technological innovation. So here, uh, technology, I don't mean very, uh, uh, as it is a very narrow concept, it's, it's more wider term in this case. So we are not talking about that it's your, web 2.0 here particularly. And um, if uh, we even look at the most strongest uh, proponents, they even believe that it's, uh, it's a threat to our society. And one of them is this Jack Ellul, who has said that uh, yeah, it's an evil force, which is everywhere and, and takes us over. And uh, the entire form of society, this is the most extreme uh, way of talking about technological determinism is that uh, it's determined by technology. And whatever new comes, changes our society. you agree on this view? Please raise your hands. You think that technology is the, is the power? No one. I like that. Because I'm not, uh, not the one who thinks that this is the most fruitful way to go. Um, we can go on. Um, there is a next um, group of people um, which we can call as instrumentalist. And I would like to start with this statement. Have you ever heard of this? When I was doing some research, I found some funky uh, revisions of this kind of statement. One of them was like, guns don't kill people, fathers with beautiful daughters do was one way of understanding this. And the other one which I found a bit uh, cool also was that guns don't kill people, but drivers with cell phones too. So you can play around many ways. But what do you think? Do you agree with this? Yes, the statement. We use guns only to mediate our activities. Okay. Any other thoughts, ideas, comments? I also found one of the cartoons, so this is the opposite of what I was just said. That the there might be some people who really think that goes to everything. Um, so what does it mean, technological determinism? So they believe, no, sorry, instrumentalists, we are already there. 
So they believe that the technologies are merely tools, just instruments what we have in our hands. And we use it in a way we want to, and in a sense they are neutral, which means that um, we give them a purpose. So, uh, for example, if uh, we think about the knife, we can kill someone, we can use it for cooking, we can also use it for carrying out the surgery. So we assign the purpose to a tool. So these tools or technology we use, they don't influence our view of world, and means and ends are independent from each other. And here this statement I showed you before fits very well. So guns don't kill people, people do. So I already said that they are neutral, and it depends on what we want to do with this. Is it for good purposes or bad purposes? It doesn't matter much. And um, it really depends on how we use it, so then we can decide if the tool is, is good or bad. So if we think about now Web 2.0, and here I would want to have your contribution. Because instruments, they can um, amplify and constrain our capabilities. So uh, one example, if you think about telescope, it actually amplifies our capabilities. We can see really far, but at the same time, it also narrows what we can see. And um, now coming back to our context, we talk about here that to zero. And uh, I would like to fill in this table with your help. So if you think about that to the zero technology, in what ways this technology amplifies learning and in what ways constraints? So I am waiting for your ideas. <coughs> Important to find a balance. 
but on the other, uh, um, I think it's also nice uh, the way he does it. That of course he empties my credit card in iTunes. He doesn't have one, and then he has to use someone's. But he also gets a lot of um, skills and knowledge the way he does this. So he has studied a little bit of English, but his English is not good. But he has learned so many words by now using technology, and and, and he has. Uh, understood the way it works, the system. So the other day, she, uh, he even thought that he's super smart and then can take this thing in parts. Of course, it didn't work later, but uh, <laughs> but he was so interested in this, and I can see that he gets into this flow state that he really likes that. So addictive, mainly disadvantage. Any other ideas? I think uh, that uh, it uh, expands borders, you can communicate uh, yeah. with more people. It's a good one. In the same time, uh, can create isolation to keep someone uh, com communicates on to these tools and not the uh, face to face. Mm. So this is disadvantage. Yeah. New techniques of mobbing is also disadvantage. Sorry? New techniques of mobbing is also the social network mobbing which goes on. I have something on the Facebook which is visible to everybody that someone is bad, 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 <laughs> and so on. Stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, but that's possible. That's what happened for, for little children not in the university. Man. Makes you bad. <laughs> Chappy, corpulent, <laughs> big bones. Chappy. Um, so we are getting back into this apes age where we got this. Well, it shapes us too. <laughs> so it's bad for the health. Mm -hmm. no, but it's, it's not only about uh, increasing the mass of the body uh, and, and the fat, it's about the health issues actually. Structure is better, like not uh, linear anymore, like that. But it's not 
either one of those. It's just the difference. Complete difference, I would say. You can hardly find a book which goes in that kind of structure. Mm. Yeah. Talking about this, um, this spending time in the internet, we sometimes make uh, fun in our office looking at each other's faces. So just secretly, so they don't know that someone is uh, observing them. And you can see very well who is working and who is not. <laughs> Some of them are smiling and then just typing, and then the others are very really serious. <laughs> so it's there you can see very easily who is actually working and who is sitting on, on a Facebook or just chatting. Do you get any other ideas? It makes you crazy when it doesn't work yeah. or when you don't have signal. Twitter is down, which happens from time to time. What's going on? Uh, Facebook is going down. Well, there are big companies behind, so they have quite a lot of control. If Skype goes down, it's If Skype, which also happens from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, what are you trying to tell me that uh, lack of control? But I think it's also. Yeah, it's a, it's a disadvantage in that sense. I would see as an advantage that it also gives you a lot of control over what you do in terms of content and tools you decide to use. And it's very easy to share information. Nobody does. Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many of you have actually uploaded your presentation? I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to. Yeah, I did. Yeah, we were discussing that people with disabilities can use it like this. But it's on the other hand as well, exclusion. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever we want to, for our purposes. 
So it uh, fits very well with this statement that comes, don't kill people, we as people do it, whatever tool we have in our hand. Okay, so let's move on. We have the last sort of strand of thinking in that area, which is called social uh, shaping of technology. And this view actually emerged as a response to technological determinism. So in a way it's um, sort of the opposite. So, how do we interpret technology? Technology has without the real value in itself. So it's a, it's a mutual co-evolutionary process where we change the tools and then the tools change, develop further and then we again change. So it's very well connected. So it is the humans or human race which shape technology and not vice versa. And it's considered to be a catalyst for social change, not the force. Do you understand the difference between now the technological determinism and social shaping of technology? That is, determinism sees technology as an independent force, but here these people think that we, as human beings, develop together with technology. We can't separate them. So, it's not an autonomous force. And it doesn't create any change unless we put it in the context. And one of the proponent, proponents have said that every system affords a certain range of interpretations and it's determined by the discourses. So have you had any um, experiences where you see different uh, affordances. First, if you start to answer this, do you know the concept of affordance? It actually comes from ecology, of course, and uh, Gibson was one of the main, of the first one who started to talk about affordances. So the main idea is the, the perceived potential for action. So if you think about, for example, a door handle, Sometimes you have a knob just in the middle of the door in some countries. And you look at this and then you start to wonder, shall I push it, shall I pull it, or just do like this? So this is about seeing affordances, what this tool or this technology allows me to do. And um, this social shaping of technology actually says that uh, we can change the way, uh, or we can change, we can use the tools maybe a slightly different in relation to its uh, initial purpose. For example, I had one experience with students. We had a huge pilot study where we had 80 different um, 80 students from different countries, we had 10 countries, and we had 8 facilitators. And they had to do also distant work, group work, and um, for communicating each other, one group started to use a weblog, which for me was rather strange. Why would you communicate via weblog? So weblog, its uh, original purpose is, is a bit different, so it's, it's not about really communicating. And they started to put their questions, and then they asked as an next post, and then again, and again, and again. So for me, it was a rather strange way of using this tool. Do you have some sort of experience? It doesn't have to be related to teaching or learning, but maybe in your life, where you have used or seen someone using the tool in a slightly strange way, or not exactly the way it was uh, planned. Computer. Yeah, that's a 
take an ounce and do it like this. Okay, yeah. My friend does that a lot. It's kind of dangerous when he's around his mouse. So I'm very happy that he got his first laptop. And then now he got a mouse. How many has he killed already? <laughs> well, that I don't know, but I know that his cat, the cat suffers a lot from that. So this is the aggression. Imitation. Well, it's not aggressive, it means that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Any other ideas? Um, there are a lot of videos where Mac Potato is used like a knife. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> slightly different. Yeah, it is. So there are lots of videos where iPad is used as a. Um, they were to talk to the thing, so... <laughs> 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 the work? They, they used the iPhone, you know, yeah. for cutting the vegetables. <laughs> okay. I guess Finns have this uh, Nokia throwing mm -hmm. contest or something. <laughs> they go and sell their Nokias mm -hmm. and get some prize for that. <laughs> But some um, maybe really serious examples, like. <laughs> but I guess it's uh, strange to talk via messenger, for example, when you just sit next to another yeah. person. <laughs> this is what my Portuguese colleague does. She <laughs> sits one and a half meter away from me in the office, but she uses messenger to talk to me. <laughs> Might be the reason, but I think this is also her personality that she But have you had experiences where you have seen something but you can't figure out how it works? Because you don't see the affordance that you I was once in Canada. They have really strange uh, shower systems there. <laughs> My friend uh, went first, and um, I went a bit later. And first thing he asked me to do is, "Come, I want to show you something. You have to come to the bathroom." <laughs> okay, what's going on? And he just pointed to the uh, shower system and said, "Please." I'm going to, going to count time now, how much time it takes you to figure out how it works. <laughs> and I spent 20 minutes to figure out how this thing works. And he said that he had the same problem. So he had already taken all his clothes off and put some shower gel and then <laughs> no water is coming out. And he couldn't figure out how it works. It took really long time. So yeah, sometimes these designs are not very very clear how you should use them. Yes, it happened in Iceland uh, two weeks ago with my friend. They couldn't shower, they just didn't know how to use it. So in the end, they, they used the water. Yeah, so <coughs> the way uh, we basically shape our technology, it, it, uh, it shapes us. And uh, we can't say that it's, uh, it's, it's not either way that uh, we change society and then technology will follow, or we bring in technology and then all of, the si uh, all of the sudden society has changed. So it's a mutual proce process and it goes together. And uh, the way we use technology, it mirrors our values, but also our flaws. How many of you feel very close to this kind of approach? That social shaping of technology. That we shape our tools and then they shape us. 
uh, outcomes will be much better, students will learn much faster, the outcomes will be super, and um, we didn't really think why or what, well, we thought that it would be nice to have iPads because it makes them learn faster, but he never thought of the software which is supposed to go there, especially in Estonia, and how expensive it is. So the initiative was not very successful, finally. But this is how uh, it is very often done. So they get some ideas, oh, let's do it, let's buy it. But we don't really think through why, how, and is it really possible. And um, I once, when I prepared my um, dissertation speech, then I found this nice uh, quote from already 1854 and um, well the main idea is that we have all these improved means but we haven't improved our ends so we don't usually think why we do this what has changed and if it really makes sense and I very much like these modern um, philosophers of technology because uh, they claim that uh, when we actually choose to use technology then you already get a different way of life and it carries certain values certain ideas and we have to also think of different uh, ideas and values what it brings to us and in, uh, to, to education and uh, technology transfer without appropriate cultural transfer is not sufficient. So there was a nice quote that you can see only trees, but you can't see the forest. Mm -hmm. Basically the message. So it's, we should think a bit about this a bit wider, that it's not only about tools, it's, it's a whole culture and different approaches. And probably you have also understood that uh, that technology doesn't only affect your behavior, but it also changes your social norms and structures. So, I guess you all agree that we need a new culture of learning. And we should think of more how to do this. It's challenging. And I want to finish this uh, uh, presentation with a quote from one uh, book I recently read, quite nice one, I recommend, mm -hmm. about new culture of learning. <coughs> Just one idea what we have to think of or what's important these days, not only the content but also some additional competencies. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much for your contribution. And the uh, questions, comments, critics are welcome. Yeah, are there any questions? Well, then it was a little bit more theoretical. It was. Maybe too theoretical. But I consider this important, at least I have started to realize that you sometimes have to think about these things. Not only bringing new tools, new tools, new tools. Mm -hmm. Maybe a question from my side. Have you ever thought how you're using technology? Like in your private life or? I think that uh, a few weeks ago was a really uh, funny cartoon. There were two cartoon animals walking in the street. And one of them was saying uh, something like this, that uh, have you noticed uh, how the group based on the young communicators would do? And the other one says it's like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is basically how nowadays we communicate even with our best friends. We don't meet uh, more often like once a month because uh, we study in different places. Uh, so we just can't think we meet. And basically that 
that's more or less about liking each other's statuses. Yeah. Well, on the Facebook platform, when we're talking about this guy, it's actually a different thing than stuff. I just can bring up an example from my own private life. Uh, my mom was here on, I can't remember, on Tuesday, I think it was, because her email didn't work anymore. And, well, of course, I'm somehow right now I'm pretty close to her because she's not living far. Uh, and, and the first thing, of course, she really needs the, the, the internet, the email working, because she's really right now depending on this technology. So we are really not that independent, even older people, like 60 plus. It's not like only the, the young generation is really sitting or spending, I don't know, 10, 12, whatever hours a day in front of the computer. It's, it's also influencing all generations. Well, I, uh, I think I cannot say that uh, it's good or bad because it's, I think it's every person's uh, choice how to use technology in what amount to uh, use this technology. What's the purpose of using that technology? Should it be work or should it be, you know, just for fun, just to meet friends, just to easy your task? So I think it's uh, finally a personal choice what to do with, uh, with it. As of course it exists, it will exist, it will develop more and more. Some of the things you will have to learn because otherwise you cannot go from one place to another if you don't know how to, I don't know, even in the airport, it's no, okay. so you have to learn it, otherwise you are just sitting here and you don't get in the plane. Or you ask the how if you want it. But um, to, to, to a more extent it's up to you and it's your own personal choice. And the concerning what you said about work in some companies and even in some universities you are not allowed to download some fun uh, programs on a, on a computer because as you said, um, it was uh, already um, proven that uh, the, the time that you are using to work is lesser when you have all these things. Like Yahoo Messenger, I know I, I had a friend in the UK and he worked in a company in an organization. I said, okay, then we can you know, just talk to each other using Messenger. And he said, I'm not allowed to put it on my own computer. Can I just add here and jump in here and ask, is it really our own choice? Because I'm a little bit worried that it's not anymore. Just an example, I was in Unia in Sweden and I wanted to check, well, the checking there doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need to use technology. I thought, uh, yes, uh, so that's what I said, that some of the things you are obliged to use, but to the extent, uh, some extent it's your own choice, like, I don't have Facebook, I don't want to, I don't need to, I have my own friend, I don't want to, so I think that is my, my choice and I don't feel obliged, nobody can oblige me, that's my choice. Well, when, once uh, when the good practice, how you can um, think about this, that if you want to start using a tool, in a certain context, then you should um, try to use as much as possible the, the work basically in order to, I do this in order to do this, and then continue and continue in order, in order, in order. And um, for example, if I think about my personal sort of bear block, I'm not very into blocking <coughs> but, but I understood that I have to be the signal if I want to be a researcher. So we do this in order to, and uh, yeah, attention is our currency these days. So we we have to be busy, but we can think of in order to, in order to. But I also wanted to add, coming back to this uh, statement, uh, people don't kill people. Oh, how was it? Guns, Guns don't kill people. People do. And uh, with this uh, social shaping of technology. So if we give guns to people, don't you think that it creates a rather different social world than without guns? Look at Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are a lot of guns. <laughs> yeah. But if we don't provide these, 
then they don't have the opportunity. But if you provide it, there is at least one person who will use it. If you don't allow them. If you don't give them guns, they are going to find another solution. To kill from them, yes. By the way, the studies say that uh, um, the presence of guns, because there were so many discussions about uh, you know, having the guns, like in the United States and some other countries, which where uh, it is not so, uh, it is not legal, or not so many people have it. It is shown that uh, it's not the, uh, it doesn't increase the uh, criminality, the existence of guns. So it has to be some other factor that increases in a population in a different region the increase of criminal uh, actions. So thank you for being awake and contributing. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess we will make a small break, like 15 minutes. So I suggest to me that 15 past 10 here again. Actually today we have a little bit longer day and a little bit intensive day. So yeah, try to stay awake and maybe some coffee or something like that will help. Uh, yeah, and I'm looking forward to see you in 15 minutes. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have mentioned it. <laughs>